What's up YouTube? Welcome to the top 5 meta 3.18 league starter video. Now in this video, we'll go over the top 5 meta builds that I think you can use to take on all of the uber pinnacle content. Now most of these builds will skew really heavily towards having extremely good single target because a lot of builds do reach this red map wall where you just can't kill the map bosses anymore. And if you roll any life mods on a map, the map boss is pretty much unkillable. And I do think with some of the new mods or Arch Nemesis mods on rares, that single target is probably going to be a lot more important than before. So that's why most of these builds will be very single target oriented. Now, you might be wondering, are these builds all the same as 3.17? Well, you bet your ass they're exactly the same, except for Seismic Trap. Last time around, people thought that Seismic Trap was nerfed a lot, and people didn't really know exactly how the nerf was going to be for Seismic Trap, right? But it turns out Seismic Trap is super, super strong. But all of these other builds are going to be identical. I'm going to showcase a feared with the build. You can see it in the top right little like video pane when I go over each of the build's weaknesses and strong points, right? So let's get started right away with the fan favorite build of Explosive Arrow Totems. So as you can see here, this is Explosive Arrow Totems. Now this build was pretty much, I think, the most popular league starter last time around. And even though people had a lot of reservations saying that the build was going to be a failure or that it was going to be a base build, it turns out that the build was extremely, extremely strong and that there weren't that really many fail points for the build as long as you understood how to proc elemental equilibrium and that you couldn't have any fire damage on your gear. But basically, you're able to play this build on elementalist for softcore and you want to be a champion on hardcore. And this build's primary strong point is that it has crazy single target ignite DPS. It is not very hard to get to 4 to 5 million ignite DPS on elementalist. And you still have pretty good clear because you can just put down your totems and it'll kill everything and it'll prolift the ignite and everything will pretty much just die. The main problem with this build is definitely the fact that it is a totem build, right? And totem playstyle is really, really strong for bossing. As you can see here in the fear, the guy just putting down the totems, running around in circles, and he can pretty much focus all his time on dodging boss mechanics, right? But for mapping, it's not exactly the fastest mapper in the world. And it also means that your build will kill a lot of things in the back and that you can't loot the items, right? So you do have to do a lot of backtracking. This build is extremely, extremely tanky, even in the softcore variant. If you do the hardcore variant with champion, you have an extra layer of fortify on top, along with a lot, lot more aura effect, right? So you can get 100% spell suppression. You can also run grace, determination, and defiance banner. And this build is super cheap to start. There are some expensive items like Diadian Dawn, which was around, I think, like 50, 60 chaos at League Star, Reign of Splinters. And this build actually has a very clear upgrade path. It's very easy to know what you need to upgrade. Like you have to make the plus two bow with the six link or plus three bow that is. And overall, lovely experience wise, it's kind of not exactly the most straightforward build to level because you can't just start off playing EA totems. Both builds will be Armageddon brand into Armageddon brand with cremation. And then you'll probably swap to EA totems sometime around like act nine or act eight depending on when you want to swap right so build is extremely extremely good but main thing you want to make sure is that you enjoy the play style this build can easily kill all of the uber pinnacle bosses but some people just hate the totem play style and how you have to backtrack to loot so next up we have my favorite build of all time or maybe not or sacker might be but this is the build i will probably be playing for 3.1a if i lack creativity because it's what i played at 3.17 right so the reason why i bundle these two skills together is because spectral helix and lightning strike are pretty much the same build right they're both nightblade claw builds that takes advantage of how broken nightblade support gem is now you want to level with spectral helix in the beginning and then you want to swap to lightning strike when you get good enough gear like plus one strikes, you get Vol Lightning Strike, you get a good Ellie Claw. So, and then you'll have extremely, extremely good map clear speed, right? So in the start, you want to be Berserker, Raider, or Champion in Softcore. You want to be definitely only Champion in Hardcore. Now, the reason you want to do this is because Berserker has by far the most damage and Champion is the tankiest. Now, I do think that Berserker is going to be the best option for almost everyone if you're playing in softcore because eventually, if you plan on getting a Headhunter or Mage Blood, 
A champion cannot get that because they have to rely on using the Perseverance Unique Belt to get a majority of their damage. Now, I don't really know why you would choose to play a Raider because if you want to be tanky, then you should probably just be a champion if you want to do the damage. You probably just want to be the Berserker, so Raider is more in between, right? Now, you want to level Spectral Helix in the beginning, and the single target for this build will be carried by Vol Lightning Strike during mapping. So you'll pretty much save up Vol Lightning Strike, go to the boss, drop the Vol Lightning Strike, and the boss should be definitely dead. And the map clear is extremely, extremely good for this build, unless you run into pebbles. A lot of people hate how you attack and the pebbles will block the Lightning Strike projectiles. Now the Helix playstyle can cause a lot of people to quit the game. A lot of people's main complaint with this build was when they tried to play it was that they couldn't handle playing Spectral Helix for more than like 10 hours, right? And in order to switch into Lightning Strike, you probably had to play Spectral Helix for like 8 to 12 hours at the bare minimum. And you could swap before you get Omni, but ideally you might want to get Omni and you might want to get alternate ailments before doing a full swap. Now, the benefit of this build is you can make this build borderline unkillable. You can have 90% res, you can have 100% spell suppression, you can have 50k plus armor and evasion in the champion version. And for the berserker versions, you can actually convert all of your fizz taken as Ellie and then pretty much be nearly immune to elemental damage and fizz damage, right? And in my opinion, out of all of the league starters, this is the best build progression in that you'll have meaningful upgrades at every stage of the game. In the end, you could even swap into a 12 link crawl and reach like around 7 to 800 million DPS. And this build just feels good at every stage of the game. As you can see, the gear just gets melted, and this guy doesn't even have the best of the best gear, right? So... Beautiful build progression, but the main sticking point with this build is that people have played it a lot already and some people just can't handle leveling with Spectral Helix. Next up, we have the build that I actually played in the Gauntlet and it is Detonate Dead Necro. Now, this build is played on both on Necromancer in both Softcore and Hardcore. This build has been around for a while and it has a really smooth leveling experience. You pretty much play it as Armor Brand and Cremation. And then once you get Vault Detonate dead, you switch over to Vault DD. Now, the main thing about this build is a lot of people kind of underestimate how good Detonate dead can be in soft core. This build is pretty much an immortal build if you get Aegis Aurora. And you can actually scale the single target damage to super, super high with the Bug Spectre mob currently. There's an Orc Colossus mob that has like 65% more life than it should have. So the way that Detonate Dead works is that you desecrate the ground and then you blow up the corpse, the Spectre corpse, and then this spreads this big ignite to everything around it, right? So that is something that makes it so that you don't need any gear at all in order to do a lot of damage. This build could also go into soft core and have like 20 mil ignite DPS if you get Phantasmal Unearthed and then scale the gem level of that gem. So that you can get corpses with an insane amount of life with Ashes at the Star. Now the main downside of this build is that it is a two button playstyle. This build will never have the fastest clear speed in the world. And compared to Lightning Strike, the build's single target, or not single target, yeah, this build's single target and clear speed at the super uber endgame is obviously incomparable. And you really should make sure that you actually like the two button playstyle that you can handle desecrating and then pressing detonate dead, and you do have to kind of aim where the corpses are. And a lot of people have also told me that it is not exactly the easiest build to boss with because you have to dodge mechanics, and then you also have to desecrate and then detonate dead and then make sure you manage your focus. So it's a little bit annoying, but very, very strong build. It has a really good build progression in terms of mapping in that all the maps will pretty much feel the same. You could do a T1 map and a T16 map, and because you scale the damage with your Spectre corpse life, it just feels all the same. Now, this build also has an extra defensive layer of block and spell block while also having 100% spell suppress and high evasion slash armor. And having the block and spell, spell block is why you see this because with Aegis Aurora and spell block, your build can be near immortal. So next up, we have the kind of the newcomer build, not really newcomer in that this build is new, but newcomer in that this build was not played that widely last league. And I do think that this will probably be the most popular league starter if I had to guess. And this is Seismic Trap, right? This is played on Saboteur in both softcore and hardcore. 
And the nice part about this build is that you can actually go into crit or you can do poison scaling, right? And most people in hardcore will always do poison scaling because it's harder to scale crit and have enough nodes for life. But basically this build revolves around using seismic trap for single target. You can see here, it can benefit a lot from overlapping. You pretty much throw your traps down and everything dies to either poison or just to the sheer hit damage, right? And this skill uh, clear is carried by Exsanguinate. Exsanguinate is super good because it has some built-in chain. And the map clear speed for Seismic Trap is actually not as bad as you might expect. It's actually probably one of the... It's up there in clear speed. It's not the fastest in the world, but it will definitely not make your mapping experience miserable. And this is definitely going to be the best League Star bosser if you want to farm the Uber Pinnacle bosses ASAP. If you're playing in softcore, you can definitely drop a lot of life and pretty much go full damage with crit and pretty much be able to one phase the bosses before they're able to do anything now again like before you need to make sure that this playstyle is for you the trap play style may not be for everyone it's kind of annoying having to aim where you throw the traps and you have to learn how to preload the damage with seismic for single target now this build is super tanky it does have 15 percent reduced damage taken from blinded enemies from the saboteur node and it's a build of 100% Spell Suppression, Grace, Determination, Defiance Banner, and it also has Ghost Shroud. So you will have this extra layer of Energy Shield defense on top. So I highly recommend this build if you want to get straight into bossing and have the smoothest experience possible. Now, next up we have Skeleton Mages, and people always love this build. I think people have a minion fetish or something in PoE, but... It is what it is. This is probably one of the few builds I haven't really played all the way through endgame. So I'm not really completely sure about this build. But basically the general gist is that this build revolves around the dead reckoning jewel that makes you summon skelly mages instead of skeletons. So basically you have to be able to afford this dead reckoning jewel. And this dead reckoning jewel I think was at almost 50 chaos on day one. But before you play skelly mages you can level up as absolution necro and supposedly the single target is amazing. And it's a pretty smooth leveling experience. Now this is another build you have to make sure you enjoy the minion playstyle. It's kind of similar to the totem playstyle as you can see. This guy in this video is pretty much just running around in circles while his skelly mages kill everything. They just summon skelly mages which is pretty much the same as putting down totems and then he runs around. Now the big problem with this build is not exactly the fastest mapping build unless you get a lot of move speed on your build. But it's also relatively safe because you have all of these minions taking aggro and absorbing the boss hits or mapping minion hits. Now, something I do see a lot of people complaining about is that the build can get kind of laggy as you can see here because of the sheer number of minions and projectiles that spawn. But the build is super tanky. It is another build that has block and spell block because it's a necromancer and it's easily capable of doing all content. So that's why like in the bottom right over here, I showcase all these builds and feared that I found because it's pretty important to be able to do the bossing, especially if they advertise this league as a uh, uber, uber, uber bossing league, right? So highly recommend Skeleton Mages if you do enjoy the minion playstyle. Now overall, what are my final thoughts about everything? And uh, you can see here that this is a scale, right? And this is Lightning Strike. It's heavier and this is Arc. It's lighter, right? So the main thing to know here is that you should choose probably a league starter on this list of top 5 or you want to choose like an A tier league starter. Not every single skill is built equal and certain skills are a lot lot stronger and it's just completely imbalanced right? Like more fairly putting it the skills in this game are not balanced so if you enjoy being strong and you want to have an easier time at league star I highly recommend you choose a strong build and not just choose a build that you want you don't really necessarily want to play but you're playing because you haven't played before right so that's something to keep in mind especially if you want to do the uber pinnacle bosses now before you choose the league starter you should also try out the play style of the league starter i do think that this is probably the most important point is that some people just aren't going to enjoy the build right some people are going to hate minion builds some people are going to hate the trapping play style some people will hate the two-button playstyle of DD Necro. Some people will hate Spectral Helix. And some people will hate the totem playstyle, right? So you need to make sure you choose a build that matches your playstyle or the playstyle that you like. And another thing to keep in mind is you want to choose a build based on what type of content you will enjoy farming. 
Now, a lot of people will want to be doing bossing related stuff immediately. So you want to choose like seismic trap or something. And this is a pretty important point is that you want to keep in mind how long you intend to play your league starter and if you're willing to relevel a new character for your second build, right? So say you want to play like Aura Stacker Champion Spark. So you want to choose a build like Champion Spectral Helix into Lightning Strike into Aura Stacker, right? If you don't want to level a new character. But if you don't mind leveling a new character, you can pretty much choose the strongest league starter and then save up enough currency and then immediately re-roll into your second build after you level up the new character. Another thing is some people just enjoy playing one character the whole time. So you want to choose a build that has really good scaling all the way towards the end. And I would recommend like Lightning Strike. But it really just comes down to your goals of the league. So make sure to choose a league starter that accompanies your goal, accompanies your play style, and accompanies what type of content you want to farm. But hopefully you choose one. On this list, I do think that these are probably the top five. I think Fire Trap can be an honorable mention. And I know there's a lot of talk about Creeping Frost, but these are tried and proven. And I have played all of these builds before, so they have my stamp of approval. But thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know down in the comments below which skills you want to see a build guide for. And I will be updating the build guide for the Lightning Strike character and maybe making a DD build guide. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, and Mage Plus than me. And see you next time. Bye.